Hey, what's up? It's Justin Majeski here, and today I'm going to teach you about something called ISO invariance. Now, before your eyes glaze over and you go on to the next video, you might want to hold on because I think this is something worth learning, and I think it might be something that changes how you shoot photography. Well, what exactly is ISO invariance? It's a complicated subject that many people don't seem to understand. I was one of those people uh, until I went out and did some tests for myself. And uh, today I'm just gonna show you what it basically is. I don't need to go into all the technical details of why it works and all that stuff. There's plenty of content out on the internet to read about that. Uh, but today, we're just gonna learn the practical side of it. What is this? How can I use it? Where is it beneficial? The simplest way I can explain this is that most new cameras nowadays are what's called ISO invariant, which means that you can shoot something at ISO 100 and the same photo at ISO 2000, and you can take that ISO 100 image, brighten it up to match the luminance level of that ISO 2000 image, and you'll get no penalty in noise. So this essentially means that exposure is determined by your aperture and your shutter speed, and now the film speed, what we used to call it, is almost irrelevant because you can just simply gain or bring down in post. You know, I had read about ISO invariance years ago, and at that time I owned a Canon, and most Canons, at least the older ones that I was using, the 5D Mark III, uh, is not ISO invariant. So uh, I did some tests, and I was not getting the same results people were getting, so I just kind of brushed this off as, you know, internet hearsay or whatever you want to call it. Um, but now I own a Sony A7R Mark III, and I read about this again about a week ago, and I went out the other morning to test this. And where I think this is most useful is in uh, landscape photography, and particularly astro landscape photography. And I'm going to show you what I mean. We're going to jump into the computer here. So here we are in Lightroom, and right here I have two images. I have this first image, which is shot at 6,400 ISO, 16 millimeters, f2.8. 25 seconds, and then I have the same shot, shot at 640 ISO, 16 millimeter, f2.8, 25 seconds. So the only difference here is the, is the ISO value. So from here we can get a pretty good determination of noise levels if we match these exposures. So I'm going to click on this photo and then shift click the dark one, go to settings, match total exposure, and that just simply makes the images the same luminance value. So essentially what we've done is we have shot the image at 640 ISO and boosted it 3.32 stops. Easy enough to follow along with. So if we zoom in and take a look here, and let's go like 3 to 1, then we look between the two images. Personally, I see no discernible difference in noise levels. Even when we do comparisons side by side, I see no difference. So then what becomes the benefit? What's the point? What's the, what's the whole point of this exercise? Well, the idea is that if you're shooting at a lower ISO, you're getting better highlight detail. You're not blowing out your highlights, um, which you can kind of see here. There's a little bit of difference. You have better highlight recovery. And you also have more dynamic range. So if we look at DxO Mark, the A7R Mark III, which is what I use, when we expose at 6400 ISO, we're getting about 10, a little under 10 stops, 9.8 stops, let's call it, of dynamic range. Whereas if we expose at 640 ISO, we're gonna get 12.75, well, that's 800. But yeah, you get the idea. There's like almost 13 stops of dynamic range in there. So that's the main benefit of shooting this, especially nighttime photography. And we can do the same thing here, the moon rose, Let's jump into single viewer mode. And let's match these total exposures. So now we have an image exposed. This one's exposed at 6400. This one's exposed at 640, boosted 3.32 stops. Now if I recover the highlights here, I have awesome highlight recovery and really good shadow recovery. Now we're getting noisy. We can fix that you know, later in with um, 
some noise reduction, but let's compare here. Let's do a highlight recovery on this moon. And we get better, I think, better tonal gradations. I mean, if you look at that moon, that's blown. This is a nice soft roll off which is really, really nice to me. So to wrap this up, what this simply means is that cameras these days are just simply ISO invariant. They're ISO-less. Uh, it doesn't matter what you expose them at. It's actually better to underexpose with the ISO, uh, especially with nighttime photography, which I just showed, and get a better result, which to me was counterintuitive. I come from shooting with Canon and I come with shooting uh, film where it does matter what ISO you use, that is. Uh, a measurement of the um, total luminance that hits the sensor. Um, but it seems with these these sensors nowadays that uh, it doesn't matter what ISO you shoot at, you can always just boost and get more or less the same result. So um, for nighttime stuff, especially if you have city lights uh, in your frame or any kind of um, light pollution, I suggest putting it 640 and uh, your, your typical settings and just matching the exposure later. And it gives you better highlight detail, better dynamic range, better color fidelity, and um, yeah, that, this is how I'm going to start shooting nighttime photography from now on. So I hope you enjoyed this little uh, quick tutorial and uh, keep watching. And if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below and make sure you like the video and share it with your friends. Thanks for watching.